Hello everyone and welcome to episode 26 of Reading Lawman's Brute. We pick up today at line 1618. When we left off last time, King Lear had hastily arranged for the marriage of his youngest daughter Cordelia, and because he was so angry with her because of her reply to him before, uh, she, well, he basically uh, said, you're not getting any dowry or any inheritance. And fortunately, her prospective husband, Aganippus, the King of France, is a pretty decent guy, and he says, look, I, I don't care about the inheritance or, or any dowry, I'm interested in Cordelia herself. And so uh, Lear arranged for Cordelia to marry Aganippus. And we pick up just after that, as Lear is making arrangements for his two elder daughters, uh, Gonoril and Regan, or Gornoila and Regao. He yef Gornoila, Scotlandes kinge. He hachte Maglaunus, his machte weren store. Cornwilis duke, Regao is dochter. Da i lompit sede, sonne thereafter, that the Scot and the king and the duke speken to gatherer, mit here a still runer, nom him to rede, that here wulden all this land haben on here hond, and feden leir than, than a king, the huile the he levede. Dias and nichtes mit ferti heret knichtes, and here him wulden finden, havekes and hundes, that he mich de rieden, jernd all than a lot theaden and liben on Lisa the huile the he levede. He, Lear, gave Gornoila, Goneril, to the King of Scotland. He, the King of Scotland, was called Maglaunus. His power was strong, or his might was great. Uh, and then, we understand this verb still, and the subject, he gave Regau, or Regan, his daughter, to the Duke of Cornwall. Then it befell afterwards, soon thereafter, that the King of the Scots and the Duke, uh, the Duke of Cornwall, spoke together with their, their quiet or their secret councils, their secret secrets, something to that effect. They took, uh, they took for themselves as counsel, so the, the course that they decided upon, I believe we have seen this turn of phrase before, uh, although it may have been some time ago. Uh, so they, they decided that they would have all this land in their hand or in their power and support Lear the king the while that he lived, as long as he was alive, uh, by day and by night with 40 household knights. So Lear would have a retinue of 40 people. And they, this uh, the Duke and the King, the King of Scotland, would find for him, for Lear, hawks and hounds, so that he could ride throughout all the, the land and live in peace or live in contentment the while that he lived. So basically, they've got a nice retirement deal, uh, nice retirement um, arrangements for King Lear. Thus here thy is speaking, and eft hit to breaken, and liar king git he herde, and eft him was the worse, and liar gan leather to Scotina leader, mid Maglauna his athuma, and mid there elder dochter. Me underfenge then a king, mid muchele fire and well mid him dichter, mid ferti hered knichters, mid horsen and mid hundes, mid all that him behaved. Tha he lump hit sethan, Sena thereafter, the Gornoila bethochte what he had on michte. Thus they spoke then, and afterwards they broke it. And King Lear heard it, so he heard about this arrangement, and afterwards it was the worse for him. And Lear went, um, Ganlitha did go, went, to the people of the Scots, with Maglaunus, his son-in-law, and with the eldest daughter, uh, Gornoila, Goneril. 
people, this is our impersonal pronoun, so we could either render this as just people received the king, or we could take it passively and say that the king was received with great fairness. And well, people uh, made arrangements for him, arranged him. Uh, and again, we could take this passively. It was well arranged for him with 40 household knights, with horses and with hounds, with all that uh, was necessary for him. Then it befell, or it befell afterwards, soon thereafter, that Gornoila, Gonoril, thought what she might do, what she could do. Here thought us with the Isle of Athelene here, father, and here he'd begun to mine and to maglaune here loverde, and said to him, Bede, there here lion if era, Siame me lavert, monothu ert me levest, me thuncheth that me father nis no wicht fele. No he worth shipper ne can, his wit ne he have it beleved. Me thuncheth the aldermon will do to you no none. It seemed very bad to her about her noble father, so she has a negative opinion of the situation. And she began to speak it, or say it, to Maglaunus, her lord or her husband, and said to him in bed, where they lay together, Say to me, my lord, you are the dearest man to me. It seems to me that my father is not a bit, not a bit well, not a bit in touch with things. He does not know any honour. His wit he has abandoned. It seems to me the old man will now at once, or now anon, so now soon, uh, dote, so enter dotage. He halt her for ti knichtes, dies and nichtes. He have echt her the steines and alle her swines, hundes and haviches, therefore we habit harmes, and no where he ne sped it, and avre he spen it, and all that good that we him doth, he hit bluzelitje underforth, and kunnen us unthunk for ure well dede. Her doth muchel bismera, ur men he to bet it. Me father have it to money of idle manner. Alle the fair thedale let away forth fuse. Inoche have it on thirty to thirgen to borde. He holds here, so this is still uh, continuing what Goneril is saying. Um, he, Lear, her father, holds here forty nights, both day and night. He has here these uh, these retainers and all their all their men, hounds and hawks, therefore we, or for that reason, we have injury or harm. So it's not to our advantage that he has all these people. And nowhere are they, um, are they successful, but in this case, something more along the lines of are they beneficial or are they advantageous? And always they squander. And all the good that we do to them, they receive it gladly and know for us, or know to us, in gratitude, unthanks, for our good deeds. They do much, um, much insult, much, much shame, uh, much ridicule. They beat our men which, if that's true, uh, is, is pretty out of line. But I don't know that we can necessarily take Goneril at her word here, or that we're supposed to. My father has too many of idle men. All the fourth part, so one-fourth of this retinue, let us hasten forth, so let us send away. He has enough in thirty to gather at the table. So 30 people are more than enough for Lear, she says. He doesn't need 40, that would be excessive. 
U selva we habit cookers to quetchener, to cutchener. U selva we habit berman and beerlers in over. Let we sung this muchul folk, far where he wooleth. Swa ich ever a bead in ara, Itholian nulle ich hit mara. This he heard the maglaunus, that is quen, spieled a thus, and he hear a answarede, mid other a speecher. Livedy, thou have us muchul woo. Navis tu rich domino, a hal zine father on lisse. Ne luvethe he no wicht longer, for ye ferne kingers ye herte the tidinder, the we swa takede him on, here us walden talon. We ourselves have cooks to go to the kitchen. Slightly unusual use of this word here, I think, uh, in the context, but nevertheless, that seems to be what it means to go to the kitchen. We have ourselves uh, bear men, so people who can uh, carry, like people who serve dishes of food, uh, and cup bearers enough. Let, uh, well, we, we should let some of this great folk, of this great company, go where they wish. As I ever hope for. Um, and this is usually grace, and this is kind of a standard turn of phrase, as I hope to receive grace, um, and referring, of course, to Christian salvation. But in this case, we're talking about characters who are in pre-Christian Britain, so we might just render it as favour or something. So as I hope to obtain favour, I will not suffer it any more. So I won't put up with it a moment longer. Maglaunus heard this. Uh, he heard that his queen spoke thus, and he answered her with noble speech. Lady, you have a great wrong. You've you've you're you're um you're wrong to do this. Essentially, you do not have enough um, enough nobility. But hold your father in peace, in contentment. He does not live, and this is the present tense used for the future because there's no morphologically distinct future tense, so he shall not live uh, very long at all. For if foreign kings heard the tiding that we took him on so, that we treated him like this, they would, um, they would speak ill, they would, they would murmur um, about us. Ach latawe hina welden his folk on his willen, and this mina ach red is, for soon hereafter he beeth dead, and ach we haben in ura hond al half his kinalond. Thus I de gornoile, lavert, bear thou stille. Let me al i worthen, and it ham ule at welden. Here sinde mid here a to their knichtene inne, here hacht them faren here why. For here nulden hem no more feten. Money of them thynen, money of them swinen, the theater were in a common mid liar than a king. Uh, so continuing the speech of King Maglaunus, but let, uh, we, we should let him rule his people in his will according to what he wants. And this is my own counsel, my own advice. For soon hereafter he is or he will be dead. And we have in our hand all half of his kingdom. End of Maglanus' speech. Then said Goneril, Lord, be you quiet. Be, hold your peace. Uh, let me all bring it about, all arrange it, make it happen. And I will... Uh, govern them, I will um, probably more in the sense of take governance of them, so I will assume authority. She sent, oh, well, yes, so end of her dialogue here. She sent with her, with her device, with her trickery, uh, to the lodging of the knights of Lear's retinue. She commanded them to go uh, to go their way, 
because she would not support them anymore. Many of the retainers, many of the men, who had come there with Leah the king. This he heard the liar king, therefore he was swith of rach. Thou he yeded the king, mid yemelitche warden, and thus side of the king a sort of full on moda. Wa worther than mona, the lond haveth me mid minske, and betatchet hit his childe, the wheeler the he my hit walden. For ofter hit i limpth, that eft hit him of thinteth. No itch wulla hunna faren, for trichte to cornwallen, yernen itch wulla redes, to regau mere dochter, they have a hemery, the duke, and me drichli chalond. King Lear heard this, therefore he was very angry. He lamented, or then, sorry, then the king lamented, with a uh, heart felt with careful or sorrowful words. And thus the king said, sorrowful in his mind or in his heart, May woe come about for the man who has his land, who has land with honour, and entrusts or gives it to his child, the while that he may it uh, may rule it. So, if he gives it uh, to his heirs while he still is able to um, serve as the king. For often it befalls, it comes about, that afterwards it... Um, uh, this is an impersonal construction, so it causes him regret or something like that, but it's perhaps better off if we just read it as um, that often he regrets it or rues it. Now I will go hence, I'll go away from here, straight to Cornwall. I will seek the counsels of Regan, my daughter, who Henry the Duke had along with and or along with my lordly land. And that's where we will leave it today. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, corrections, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. You can do that either by way of the comment section below or by way of the Facebook page that I've made for the video series, and you'll find that linked in the video description. So, all the best, and I'll see you next time.